All righty, everyone. This is meteorologist Timmy Albertson here with you guys for tonight's weather chat with Timmy. Uh, we got to take a look at some storms down across the Red River Valley area of Texas and Oklahoma. I say that because, believe it or not, there's also another Red River Valley that uh, is in parts of Minnesota and North Dakota over around the Fargo area. So we're going to take a look at the southern Red River Valley, the one that is down in Oklahoma and Texas. They got a few strong storms there right now. We'll also take a little bit of a look over at Hurricane Lee. With that in mind, though, before we begin here, before we go any further, I just want to point out that uh, for those of you who have subscribed to this particular YouTube page, and I'm talking about the AWSC one, uh, you might notice that there is actually two separate uh, uh, YouTube pages for our channel. So what's going to be happening is, is we're going to be moving uh, you know, the weather chat to the main YouTube page. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like here really quickly. We're going to take a look over at the uh, screen here. We'll come back to all these uh, flights that you see here in just a moment. This is the one, if you are subscribed to our uh, page, this is probably the one that you might be subscribed to. It's got the little thunderstorm image up top here. You're going to actually want to end up going over and subscribing to the other one with all the snowfall totals. And the web address for that, for those of you uh, who may be wondering, it's actually this. So if you type in awsc.live, it'll take you to the one with the snowfall map on it. That's the one you're going to want to subscribe to. Beginning on October 2nd, uh, weather chats here with Timmy are going to be on that page. So if you're already on that page, you're in the right spot. But if you haven't yet, Make sure you subscribe to the one with the snowfall map. That's where these weather chats are going to be posted uh, coming up here in the near future. So with that in mind, let's take a look over at Hurricane Lee, shall we? All right, hur not Hurricane Lee, Hurricane Nigel. Hurricane Nigel right now is a Category 2 hurricane of 100-mile-an-hour winds. The convection is looking a little bit better. We can see it kind of concentrating around the center there. It's got kind of a big eye, though. Uh, but nonetheless, it is still a Category 2 hurricane. Uh, Nigel may intensify a little bit more over maybe the next 12 or 24 hours, but then it's going to really begin to weaken, especially once it moves into the cooler, uh, colder water temperatures of the North Atlantic, and that's going to cause it to really begin to weaken quite noticeably by the time we get towards the end of the work week. So again, maybe another 12, 24 hours of Lee maybe trying to intensify, or not Lee, Nigel trying to intensify a little bit more, and then it's just going to kind of taper itself out as it moves over into the north, well, the northern or Atlantic, the northern or the northern North Atlantic. There we go. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So not expecting this to get anywhere near land here. Of course, Bermuda way off towards the west. Um, nearest islands that might be passing later on will probably go, uh, you know, just kind of really out in the open there. So that's kind of the main thing with uh, Nigel. Again, not as exciting as Lee, perhaps, but still a hurricane nonetheless. Alrighty, everyone. Now, we were taking a look uh, last night. We were talking about kind of the atmospheric setup for what we could be seeing, uh, some strong storms. I guess I'll take this text off. We don't need that. All right. Uh, those, some of those strong storms that were going to be possible today down across parts of the Red River Valley of Oklahoma and Texas. And as a matter of fact, we actually have some that are kind of firing up right now. So we're going to go ahead and take a look over at the radar here. and We'll take a look at some of those storms. Then we'll kind of take a little bit of a look at the atmospheric setup here. Let me go ahead and flip over the screen here. And there we go. We got this kind of general severe thunderstorm watch that is in place. And that is pretty much right around the southwestern part of Oklahoma going into parts of the Texas Panhandle. Again, this is kind of the uh, bigger cities around this area. Lubbock is for too far off to the west. Same thing for Amarillo. But it does include parts of the western Oklahoma City metro, as well as Lawton, Oklahoma. And then, of course, parts of the Red River. And then once you head over to Wichita Falls in Texas, and then going back over a little bit to the west there. So as I jokingly said earlier, this is the Red River Valley. We talk about that a lot, the Red River. Uh, is what kind of the border of Oklahoma and Texas, at least, uh, you know, for the southern part of it, or the southern part of Oklahoma, that's where the border is. Uh, it's on the Red River, not to be confused with the Red River of the north, which helps to make the border between Minnesota and North Dakota. And yes, it is confusing in weather sometimes when you have to make the distinction. But that's besides the point. We're talking about the Southern Red River today. So we got a couple of storms that are firing up. And kind of the main setup here that we were expecting today was going to be maybe some locally strong winds and the possibility for maybe some large hail with some of these thunderstorms here. There doesn't appear to be enough favorable act, uh, favorable conditions for there to be a lot in the way of low-level rotation that maybe kind of you know produce any tornadoes. But sometimes we are dealing with some of these kind of supercellular storms. 
uh, especially the ones that produce big hail, sometimes they do have a little bit of low level rotation for them. So it's not unusual uh, sometimes to maybe see one of them trying to produce a weak tornado. But for the most part, this is mainly going to be kind of a hail type of setup here. Kind of the strongest storm right now that we're taking a look at is west of Frederick, Frederick, Oklahoma, all the way pretty much right on the border here. And this one is being warned for hail about 1.5 inches. So again, the, the, the possible wind speeds with the storm are maybe 60 mile an hour, but it's probably going to be a little bit less than that. Main thing is going to be some hail out there. And as a matter of fact, let me go ahead here. I just want to pull up one other thing here on my phone. As a weather person, we have multiple, multiple things that we look at. And one of the ones I like to look at is on my phone to check out the MPing reports. We'll talk about that at the end of this here for those of you who might wonder uh, what exactly I'm talking about there. But sometimes it is nice to see if any of them come up and it looks like we don't have any at the moment, but we'll see if maybe someone out there happens to drive through it, you know, uh, coincidentally and maybe reports a little bit of hail. So again, that's kind of uh, the strongest storm right now. And let's take a look at it here uh, on the velocity radar image and we'll see kind of maybe a little bit here of the structure with this storm. Again, the velocity uh, radar imagery that we use is what we use a lot to look for rotation within a thunderstorm or in the strong wind. So it's this green and red radar you see on the right. We're looking at the same area, uh, even though I am blocking part of the upper corner on the left. But regardless, we're looking at the same area here, just two different radar images at the same time. And the one that we look for on the, uh, on the right uh, again, we use this for winds, uh, looking at the winds of a storm as well as if it has rotation. The reason for that is, is that the green color that you see are the winds going towards the radar site, in this case, Frederick, Oklahoma. The reds are winds going away from the radar site, so kind of moving the opposite direction. And when we see high values of those really tight together, it's a good indication sometimes that there's rotation. But it is also sometimes when we look at these radars, we're looking for kind of broad areas of, you know, one particular color, which would be a good indication of straight line winds. So, again, that's kind of what we're looking at here. So it does look like that this storm does have at least a little bit of some gusty winds to it, albeit not the strongest winds here. We're probably only talking about, uh, let's see here. 50, 55 mile an hour wind gust possible there. Now, the thing about these storms is, as I mentioned, uh, sometimes these this, these little hail thunderstorms, I guess they're not little, but you get what I'm saying, uh, is, is that they can be supercellular, which is the type of storms that, uh, you know, go on to produce, you know, some of those big, long track tornadoes. Now, uh, kind of glazing over some of the scientific explanation here, but but long story short, sometimes with these, you know, when we're looking at these storms that just kind of end up producing a lot of strong hails, to a degree they are somewhat super, you know, supercells. And so they do have a mesocyclone, which is some rotation within the actual thunderstorm, you know, vertically. And again, a lot of times here, the atmospheric setup that we're looking at really isn't going to be much of one for low level rotation. But when you are talking about these kind of stronger storms, you do actually want a little bit of rotation that does actually help when it's producing some hail. So again, you want a little bit of wind shear to go on. You don't want those winds all kind of going in one direction. It's, it's a little funky, but uh, it does work out. So to a degree, sometimes kind of the same process. Now in this type of situation, you know, we look at the storm right up on the Oklahoma, Texas border, okay? And you notice that there's not really much down to the south of it, at least immediately. Now that's good news if you're a thunderstorm because the way that this guy is probably getting its inflow is it's coming in over here. The upper level winds are then pushing it forward. So the inflow of the thunderstorm is down here. So you don't want rain right where the inflow is trying to come in because that's cooler, dense air, which is not good if you're a thunderstorm. You want to lift warm, moist air. It's a lot easier than trying to lift heavy, wet, rain, rain cooled air. So sometimes in this situation, uh, you know, when you look at this particular storm is that it does have a little bit of an opening. So we'll see here maybe if we can get some inflow notches to kind of, you know, show up here on the radar. And if we were looking for tornadoes, uh, generally that's kind of the area that you'd want to be looking at. Uh, again, is where the, the inflow is, which for the northern hemisphere generally tends to be on the southwestern side of the storm. Again, kind of glazing over some of the scientific explanation here. When we get to severe weather season... We'll do more of this, but, uh, you know, we'll take we'll take more of a look and uh, I'll give you guys some more scientific explanation here, but I don't want to scare everyone away the first time. 
So again, we can kind of see here a little bit of, you know, probably that mesocyclone within that storm, that little bit of mid-level rotation. Again, it's not strong, doesn't have to be, uh, but it is, you know, at least some rotation ongoing within that storm. So we'd kind of be looking around that area, you know, the inflow here. Now, why are we talking about the storm that's just to its north? Well, here's the thing. Yes, it has its inflow, don't get me wrong, but the problem is, is you notice there's, there's rain right down to its south. So Again, not the best air if you're looking for low-level rotation. Again, we call that uh, basically, I call it getting drowned out, uh, effectively. Uh, so again, when we look for, you know, these supercellular storms, they like to be what is known in meteorology as discrete. Have you ever known a thunderstorm to be discrete? I didn't pick the name. You'll find as we go, folks, if I had the opportunity to name them, I would name these terms something else, like alone. But apparently discrete is a bit better. So when you hear the term discrete supercell development or something along those lines, what we're talking about is a, is a, is a supercell that is, you know, isolated. There's not other activity right up on it. So discrete ones tend to be the ones that are strong because they have that opening of the inflow. So now there are exceptions. Believe me, folks, when it comes to trenos, there are certainly exceptions to, to, to the rule sometimes. Uh, but again, for what we're looking at right now, just kind of talking about our atmosphere, you know, the current atmospheric setup down around this area is again, this one would to a degree kind of be considered a little bit in the way of discrete. Uh, it is somewhat isolated from the other one, which is way down further to its south. And again, we're talking about Texas here, folks. So this isn't like your New England townships where five miles and you're in the next county equivalent thing or Virginia, which has a bunch of them and independent cities. And then there's Georgia, which I know why Georgia has so many counties, but it, it's actually ridiculous. The number of counties the state of Georgia has is absolutely ridiculous. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, we zoom out here a little bit, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, there's a reason why Georgia has so many counties. It, it goes based off of at least the way that their, their voting goes within the state itself. But take a look at this. Whoa. Hold on a second here. Take a look at it. That has a lot of counties. That is a ridiculous amount of counties. It's like over, I think it's like 150, if I remember the number correctly, or something along those lines. It's, it's, it's a ridiculous amount. They look at Alabama, they don't have as many counties. So Georgia just likes to do this thing where they just cut up counties. And one of my favorite is Fulton County, which is mainly down here. And then there's this part up here where Alpharetta is. It's, but anyways, so Georgia has a lot of counties. But we're talking about Texas here where the counties tend to be a little bit more spaced out. Uh, not quite as close by as per se some of the other ones. So let's take a look down here and we see that kind of the nearest uh, thunderstorm to this big one here is all the way down here about uh, 20 or so miles away. So still pretty isolated. Now this guy up here, uh, again, we talked about it earlier how it, you know, is a little bit uh, different in terms of how its inflow is, but regardless, it's still a strong thunderstorm nonetheless hail possibly about 1.5 inches too within there. So again, we're not talking about tornadoes today. Again, if we were talking about tornadoes, it'd be somewhat of a different little setup here, but we're mainly just taking a look at hail, which to a degree does kind of follow some of the same uh, uh, principles there. I know, I'm a weather nerd, folks. And, and if I had the opportunity, I would go even more in detail about it. But here's something really cool. And I mean, this is something really cool. And I like to do this. Uh, for those of you who may or may not know, I'm an aviation uh, freak too. Uh, of course, the history of weather and aviation kind of go hand in hand. Uh, you know, anyways, that's not the point. The point is, uh, is, is that uh, take a look at where these storms are, right? And you can see how they're all around the Vernon Frednick, Fre Frederick area. So these are some high storms, okay? These, these cloud tops are, are very high here. As a matter of fact, are we able on this particular radar to maybe get an idea here of how high those cloud tops are? Because when we're talking about these storms, I mean, those cloud tops can really get pretty high here. And I just want to see really quickly before we go any further, if it does happen to have the cloud heights here, let's take a look at what we're looking at here. Um, uh, according to this radar estimate, 48,000 feet. So if you're a commercial airliner, you don't normally fly to 48,000 feet. You normally fly about 30,000 feet, maybe 35,000 feet. So that is a lot higher. Now, let's say you're also a plane and you're going to end up flying through the storm. You got a lot of hail to deal with, as well as some winds and a lot of in the way of updrafts and eventual downdrafts there. Not the best thing to fly through, especially when you think that a plane is mainly just aluminum. So 
they have to get diverted around it. So take a look here, uh, you know, this is the area here, and let's pull up uh, a flight radar here. And this is gonna be courtesy of, uh, whoop, that's the wrong one. Uh, this is gonna be courtesy of Flight Radar 24, one of the ones I like to use to take a look here. Might be hard to see. Here's the Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, and this is real time, folks. This is what we're looking at now, and take a look at this. Right in the area that we're looking at, you can see the flights, are being diverted around it, even the ones that are high, fly, that are flying very high. This American Airlines flight is on its way to Salt Lake City. Right now, its altitude is 32,000 feet. But look at how they diverted it around that thunderstorm. The thunderstorms, again, are right around here. So kind of a cool thing. If we zoom out a little bit, we got this guy down here. He's also being diverted around. He's on his way to Portland, flying about 32,000 feet. Again, these airliners, uh, you know, these airliners can't go above the thunderstorm and you know they, they just they can't so they got to go around it so i always enjoy seeing that uh, i always enjoy looking at that whenever there's thunderstorms again there's the frederick radar right here and again you can see just kind of quiet there uh air traffic control diverts those flights around it there so that's kind of cool to see and especially uh there was another storm earlier on down around the dallas area and actually i think it's still there so let's take a look here at the radar really quickly and not really quickly, but let's go down to Dallas. Now, for those of you who don't know Dallas airport system, Dallas Love Field, which is kind of in Dallas, is where Southwest Airlines flies out of. Dallas-Fort Worth is where everyone else flies out of. So, again, Dallas-Fort Worth is down around this area here, uh, and I believe Love Field isn't too far away, but I, can't, I don't exactly remember where in particular it is, but there are two separate airports there in Dallas. So, regardless of the fact we got this storm that is right there. If you are trying to take up from the Dallas area, uh, right now my guess here is they probably have the runway, uh, they probably have things being lined up on the runways a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and take a look at here at the Dallas area and see how they're bringing these uh, aircraft in today. So again, there's, there's Love Field right over here, I believe. Yeah, that's Love Field, and here's Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. That storm that we were looking at is right here. So let's see here how they're uh, diver let's see how they're getting these planes out. So they're bringing them in on this runway here, and uh, so the, yeah, so it looks like they're going to be getting them around the storm as the takeoff happens. So kind of cool there, nonetheless. Again, this guy coming in here too. Let's see who this is. This is a UPS uh, DC-10. Uh, no, MD-11. I'm sorry, MD-11. Uh, they look the same, but that's not the point. So you can see here on this little guy, and they kind of bring it around where that thunderstorm is. Now, again, don't get me wrong, folks, there's also a pattern they do anyway, even if the weather's clear, you know, they bring them in certain directions. But again, we have that thunderstorm just up to the north, so they can't, you know, bring the landing aircraft into that. So kind of cool uh, for those of you who enjoy that type of stuff. All right, so what is that storm in the Dallas area being warned for? Well, let's go ahead and take a little bit of a look here. Uh, it's gonna be warned for about 60 mile an hour winds, so it doesn't appear to be as much of a hail type of uh, 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 situation with this particular thunderstorm. Let's see here if we can't get, uh, see it's right up on the uh, radar site. So uh, radar and it seems to be having a little struggle of trying to get the immediate air, and it happens sometimes with radar is kind of cool. Uh, but sometimes when you get these heavy storms that go right over the radar site and kind of dilute the signal just a smidge for a few, for a little, for a few moments and, uh, makes it a little tricky to tell sometimes. But anyway, that's 92 degrees over, excuse me, 93 degrees over at the Dallas-Fort Worth airport. And back here behind that thunderstorm temperature there near Denton is 72 degrees. So a little bit more pleasant there, but still pretty muggy nonetheless. All right, so that's kind of what's going on with that. So as we work our way through the rest of the next couple of hours, I guess I should say, yeah, they're gonna be dealing with some of these scattered storms, you know, producing some hail and maybe even a little bit in the way of some gusty winds. We got this little frontal boundary that's kind of stalled out there, so they're going to kind of ride along that more or less. We got this little guy over here up in Oklahoma, not too far away from uh, Kingfisher, Oklahoma. But again, that mainly just looks to be for about one inch size hail, maybe 60 mile an hour wind, so right at the threshold there for what would be warned, uh, severe thunderstorm warning at least. So that's kind of a look at what's going on. I think it's quite interesting, uh, as a matter of fact. Now, what would be interesting to see here is do we have any. Uh, let's see here. Do we have any uh, cameras nearby? Yes, we got a couple nearby. And it looks like someone has found interest again with this uh, stronger thunderstorm. So let's see here if we can't 
maybe kind of get a quick little look here at what this particular storm chaser's got. Holy crap. I got zero visibility. That's a lot of rain. Hmm. Oh, there's a truck. Okay. That's a heavy downpour. Be interesting to see if he runs into any hail there. Uh, so yeah, so that is a look at that one storm we were taking a look at a few moments ago. That's out around the. Um, that is out around the rural. Ah, gotta get out of it. So. Look at this. Got some really good winds on it. Look at that. And there is looks like there there is some hail there. So it does look like they got some hail. Let's take a look to see. Uh, how large that hail is. This is a pretty good shot, folks. Let's take a look here. This is from Brandon Coptic, uh, Cal Coptic. Uh, we'll, we'll have the, the name tag up there. So you're getting quite a bit of winds here. That's pretty cool. And it does look like there is a, at least a little bit of hail happening there. At least it did a few moments ago. You can see it there. I have a monitor here. That's why I'm looking this way. It's the same thing that you can see there. And then apparently a, a giant hand. Um, but, yeah, look at that. It's a pretty good wind there. I'm guessing here, if we were to flip up to the, you know, if we were to pull up back up the radar, the let's see here. He's right here, so it looks like... Uh, it's tricky to tell what direction he's looking at, though, but he's going to be right there coming up on the uh, center there of the hail. So this is where this guy is, right there. Oh, big hail. And then it looks like it should be passing over him in just a few moments. So uh, we'll stick with this for just a couple more moments here. And we'll see, you know, how much hail do this guy get. Like I'm looking at another radar down there over there. And uh, yeah, so certainly a heavy downpour down there. That's for sure. It's at least raining. So we know the radar is good. Uh, what we're just looking for at the moment is hail. I'm just curious to see where this guy is. And, I mean, it should be passing right over him, so we should find out here pretty quickly. So, when we talk about the VILs, by the way, uh, no. is what we usually look when we look for hail on the radar industry. I know you've probably seen me uh, show it a few times before, but the VIL is a vertically integrated liquid, and it's a good way to look for hail within a thunderstorm. What it's doing is it's kind of unscientific, some, somewhat of an unscientific explanation, but it's kind of measuring the amount of liquid within a certain column of air. We can do that nowadays with the uh, dual pole radar here, but let's go ahead here and move this camera over really quickly, and I want to take a look here to see the VILs. Now, the reason why we look for this for hail is because obviously hailstone's much bigger, and take a look at those values. Wow. Those are some pretty decent values. So if you take a look here at the uh, thunderstorm, and it looks like here that the VIL is running probably as is normally the case here. Let me go ahead and pull that down for just a second. Uh, it looks like the VIL scan is about five minutes behind the radar one, but nonetheless, you can see very, very high values. That is that is some pretty big hail, and that's what that's being warned for. Or hail possibly two and three quarter size inches. That's pretty cool. Let's see here if that guy happens to get any of that. Though I will say, though, if you're dealing with that, you're probably going to get a broken windshield, but hey, that's what makes the fun of it. All right, let's take a look here. Oh, look at that. It's kind of almost maxed out right there on the screen here. So we're going to see here, unless, of course, this guy just happens to lose video signal right at the best part. But my guess is, is it looks like he is moving, and it looks like he's trying to line up with that more or less here. And we'll see here if we can get that video feedback, because I am very curious to see if this guy... Uh, is going to manage to get any little bit of hail here. Uh, if he's moving, it looks to be like down the interstate, or the highway here. Big hail. Would be, let's double check here why we got it. This is uh, 287, excuse yeah, me, to high, uh, U.S. Highway 287. So at this point, what we're looking at is he's kind of moving here, so I'm guessing he's trying to catch up with this, uh, this part of the storm right here. Now, the problem is, is that if he tries to turn, he's going to run right into that town. But uh, regardless of the fact, we should maybe start getting some information. And while we're on the topic, let's go ahead here and see if we can't go ahead and get some of those uh, storm reports up. Whoop, that's the wrong one. We want to get some storm reports up. So let's see if we can't get them on. So now we'll know if we can get an official observation uh, at some point. 
hasn't been any yet. Again, folks, this is not the high populated area of Texas or Oklahoma, so I mean, let's be real. Reports will probably be a little bit few and far in between. So, uh, again, the person that we were looking at, uh, chaserweather.net. Alright, so, looks like he is going into the town. I would imagine here that's exactly what he's doing. We're trying to get up to that town here. So we'll keep this video feed up here for just a few moments. I just want to see if this guy manages to actually catch up with some of that hail. Now, for those of you who haven't driven through hail before, it's it's pretty fun. But it can also be a little nerve-wracking, especially when the hailstones start hitting your windshield at about 100 miles an hour. But that's the fun of something. Uh, so I have driven through myself multiple uh, hails, not not two and three quarters of an inch. The problem is, is I don't have un unlimited uh, money uh, to buy multiple vehicles uh, or get heavy-duty glass. That would be interesting. You know, now that I think about it, that would be pretty interesting. We got any car mechanics around here? Heavy-duty glass. Do they make such a thing? They have to for those for those security or for those security vans, uh, the ones that transport all the money. That are basically tanks on the roadways. All right, so uh, it looks like he is hitting some hail now. Uh, you can kind of see it a little bit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this back up to full screen here. And it looks like this guy still is trying to go. Now, I don't know if he's gonna drive into the town, but I mean, he is hitting some very heavy rainfall. And not only that, but it does look like there is at least a little bit of hail here bouncing off of him. So I'm curious, you see it bouncing off there. So at the moment, this looks to probably be about Piece uh, maybe penny size, quarter size hail. It's a little hard to tell about being there. I can't see what's on the rollway, but what, what's bouncing off the windshield doesn't appear to be too large, at least at the moment. But man, that is a downpour. That is a heavy downpour. Uh, that is that's like a month's worth of rain right there. Um, let's see here. That is, yeah, he is getting some hailstones now. To be, I, mean, I guess if we have you know, good job for them, but uh, we're not done because that's a video. Anyways, all right. So what we're seeing here, the wind is also kind of interesting too. I mean, it's looking like you're getting some wind. Pull it up on my radar here. It's interesting because the, the wind that looks like they're getting looks to be slightly more than what we're seeing on these radar images, but oh, but not that much. So you know, you might have, well, that's difficult to tell. If that burst of wind we saw when we first joined in, might have been this wind burst that is down down to the south. It's a little out of flow. The video is very interesting. And what's also very interesting about it is the heaviness of that one. So, yeah, we'll stay with this for just another moment or two. It's pretty cool. So now we all know, by the way, folks, uh, what is that town? This town is, uh, I'm going to butcher its name. Uh, Quan, Quana? Quana, Texas. Quanta, Texas. Now we know what Quanta, Texas looks like in a heavy thunderstorm. This is actually, I mean, a really big amount of uh, rain here. Even though, I mean, that's a lot of rainfall. Uh, the radar returns on this is very impressive. Uh, it's certainly just a lot of moisture in this atmosphere. Well, that, that looks like a decent sized hailstone that just bounced there. Okay, so now I'm thinking this dude has probably found hail that he was looking for. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That is good hail. Look at that. Look at that. You can kind of see it a little bit back down here. Look at that. looks like, uh, you can see my cursor. It looks like, uh, it kind of piled up there on the side of this building. I'm assuming that my eyes do not deceive me. It looks like a little bit of, uh, the nail kind of came in there on the side there. Think. Or it could just be water rushing off the side. Regardless, it's pretty cool. Hard to tell sometimes with these videos. So, he certainly got the hail, but to me it doesn't look like, does not look like nearly three inch size hail. So he must be, yeah, so there is a report about one inch size hail, which looks to be the hail for what we're seeing. At least maybe, 
maybe a little bigger. It's difficult to tell. I don't have a. I'm not in the vehicle, so it's difficult to tell. But if you've ever been in a car during a hailstorm, it sounds fantastic. It's also very loud. So I'd imagine that this video is very loud. Uh, if it had sound. Well, it might have sound, but I have it on mute. All right, so if nothing else, it looks to be certainly a heavy, heavy, heavy downpour. And we'll stick with this for just a couple more radar scans, and I'll probably go ahead and wrap this video up. Uh, you can see the clear sky already in the corner there. I guess that would be on your right. That's pretty cool. But yeah, it did not look to be about that. Did not. And again, he was on the edge of it here. So to give you an idea uh, of where this guy was looking, uh, if we were to go ahead and take a look here. So he was right here. So the heaviest of the thunderstorm, uh, at least for the moment, was probably just up towards his north. Now it does look like, if we were to loop this a few scans here, it does look like that it... Maybe weakened just a little bit, but... Oh, it's, 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 it, it, I'd say it maybe about the same. The front end of it looks like it kind of fell apart a smidge, but the back side looks like it's still doing pretty well. So this guy, in case you're wondering, is right down here. And so if we're going to line this up a little bit, it looks like the heaviest of the hail, if there was any, probably was just to his north. So where he was, oh, he's got a rainbow. Uh, but where he was at, uh, it certainly got out one inch of the tail. That does line up with uh, one of the opposition uh, of that one inch size hail on the south side here at Quana. So now, again, he's got him on the back side of this here, and let's go ahead. The storm is now moved out from where the guy is, and there's that. Pretty cool, huh? Alrighty, well, that was certainly a fantastic show. I think that was pretty cool. All right, well, so there you go. We saw one inch size hail. Again, additional scattered storms up to the north and everything, and this might try to maybe kind of coalesce maybe slightly into maybe a little small line eventually, but uh, as far as MCS, it doesn't appear to be so much. Well, Let's go back down here towards the well, Dallas I'm Airport. I want to take a look at that little storm down there. That's probably given a headache uh, over at the airport. Oh, look, let's see here. It looks like we do have a camera right at the airport. Possible. No. Never mind. All right. Well, folks, that was pretty cool. All right, so with that in mind here, I think we've seen a lot of stuff today. All right, we talked about Nigel. Nigel's mainly going to be staying out in the open waters. We got that thunderstorm that we just watched, which was actually... Hold on. It's all the way, all the way back here. Kind of out in the open. Or, well, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Alrighty, everyone. Well, looks like we ran over a little bit here, but nonetheless, we still got some good stuff from it. So, for those of you, again, who, 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 who may have forgotten, uh, as we were talking about earlier, there are uh, two Facebook pa or two YouTube pages uh, that you may be uh, may cause a little confusion. So right now, if you're subscribed to this one, this is the one with the thunderstorm at the top for the image. Okay, you're gonna want to make sure that you go over to oh, semi -truck blown this semi -truck blown. address, awsc.live. If you type that in to your web browser, it'll take you to this page with the snowfall totals from a storm that happened. I bet you over back in February. So. Uh, that's the one that you're going to want to be subscribed to because this is going to be the one where the weather chats with Timmy are going to be posted to only beginning October 2nd. Okay, so if you you've got, still got like, what, two weeks to move over there and subscribe, okay, okay. but eventually this this channel right here, here will be the one where the weather chats with Timmy are going to be posted. All right, fun times. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, everyone, I thank you all very much for taking the time to join me here on tonight's Weather Chat with Timmy. Uh, hopefully you found it a little bit interesting. 
I know I certainly found it very interesting. I think it'll certainly uh, be pretty cool. Uh, keep an eye on these storms as we go through the rest of the evening. Maybe uh, find some other things. Oh, hey, before I forget, uh, for those of you who wondered about uh, Hurricane Lee over the weekend, it did pass by one of the buoy sites. Uh, and I do have some of the data from it. I'm going to flip the screen really quickly. Uh, there it is. So, this was that buoy that got a uh, close pass by, uh, very close pass by. You can see how quickly that pressure dropped. We made our way into what would have been that, that would have been uh, Friday evening. Uh, pressure shot right back up, that's that green line. Wind gusted almost 60 knots at one point. Uh, sustained winds over 40 knots. So again, not, not overly strong, but uh, still pretty cool there nonetheless to see kind of that really close pass by. Uh, from the 44011 out in the uh, somewhere off the coast of Maine there. So uh, pretty cool. I just figured I'd show that because I forgot to show that last night. All righty. Now that that's been accomplished, everyone, I hope you all have a good rest of your evening. And I look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow evening. We'll take more of a look at some storms, if there are any, as well as Hurricane Nigel and whatever else might uh, be worth taking a look at. Of course, everything in weather is always worth taking a look at. But... Uh, Sometimes you have to pick and choose a little bit. Uh, so with that in mind, I hope you all have a good rest of your evening. We'll see you back here tomorrow evening. Hopefully you learned a little bit. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Take care, everyone.